Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey. No, I'm just here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Can we get the, my mic down just a little bit, please? My mic, can you get it down just a little bit? Thank you. I don't want to blow off your ears. Anyway, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you so much to the Bell Choir for just starting us off with wonderful music. I would like to apologize for those who are joining us online and also to the Bell Choir, the camera that was set up to get you guys is now facing the floor uh, and I couldn't uh, quite fix it in time. So my apologies to the bell choir and those uh, joining us online. 
Again, I'd like to welcome you and may the peace of Christ be with you all this wonderful morning. And it's so great to see new faces and visitors as well. And this time I did not forget. Uh, so I have my phone ready uh, for our Sunday photos. Again, for those of you wondering why is the pastor taking this, well, it's because I still need to get used to everyone's faces uh, because I'm meeting a congregation again. I, I met the masked congregation. Now I'm uh, the semi-masked congregation. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, on Saturdays, I try to look at the photo and pray uh, for everyone who is joining us uh, because it's just such a wonderful joy to be your pastor here. So again, I do ask not to raise your hands up too high when you say hi uh, so you don't cover another person's face. So here is our picture for today. One, two, three. All right. All right, now I'd like to take this time uh, as a time to share our joys and also to share our announcements. So I'd like to start off with a wonderful joy and announcement. Uh, so the United uh, Methodist Women are starting a new group uh, called the Ruth Group Meeting. And it is a new group, uh, Ruth stands for Raising Up the Hope, and it's a small group that's a mixture of Bible study and a mission focused group as well. Uh, they will be meeting on the first and third Tuesday at 7 p.m. It's the first and third Tuesdays at 7, and the first meeting will be September 21st. So our UNW meetings, traditionally, I believe, were in uh, the lunchtime or the afternoon, uh, but this is a group that is going to be meeting in the evenings. Uh, so please uh, feel free uh, to contact uh, Jocelyn Ju Jewell or Megan Karstens uh, for more information. And we would really like uh, for uh, everyone uh, that has time uh, to be able uh, to join. Also, we have our all-church picnic next week after the second service, uh, so please uh, get ready to have fellowship. I would also like to congratulate the birthdays, David Gunderson on the 23rd, uh, Sila Hillman on the 23rd, Terry Hillman on the 23rd, and Cora Stankus on the 25th. Happy birthday to everyone who is uh, joining us and who has uh, birthdays coming up. Also, uh, if you have a birthday but aren't called, it's because we don't have information about it. Uh, so please let us know. Uh, I do like to try to give at least people a message or a call during their birthdays and anniversaries. So if you see an Edgerton number that you don't know and it's your birthday or a few days before or after it, it could be me. Uh, so please uh, pick up the phone. <laughs> And that would be it for the announcements. I'd like to share a joy. Uh, we actually went on a trip. Uh, we went camping. My family went camping for the first time. I would like to say that camping is officially not for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it was such a beautiful joy. And oh my goodness. So we went to the Sheboygan area. And I never thought that Lake Michigan could be that beautiful and that clear. Uh, and, you know, growing up, uh, coming from a peninsula, which is Korea, we're used to going to the sea and going to beaches. Uh, it's just wonderful that God gave us a beautiful beach uh, for our family so that we don't miss uh, Korea as much. Uh, but also we're spoiled because we have one of the largest lakes in the whole world. But it was such a wonderful time and just blessings uh, for Wisconsin, really, of how beautiful it is. So that is my joy that I would like to share. Would anyone else like to share their joys? to share a joy that we went camping um, last week or two weeks ago as well. Um, our venture crew for someone here in Milton had planned to go on the Wisconsin River. Um, unfortunately with all the recent rains that were up north um, that got canceled so we did the Kickapoo River instead <coughs> and had dealt with the aftermath of a flash flood up there with all the mud on the landings to putting in and putting out of the canoes and camping and everything. But it was a blast for the kids, and they had a good time, so everyone was safe. So thank the Lord for that. Amen. 
Thank you for camping, although it is not for me. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, open us up in a prayer uh, of joy and thanksgiving. So let us pray together. Uh, dear gracious God, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this beautiful Sunday. Thank you for all the birthdays, Lord God, that you have been with us, that you gifted us life. May we celebrate, Lord God, you uh, in these special occasions. Also, Lord God, thank you for giving uh, us ample places to enjoy the wonderful nature that you have given us, to stay and be in awe of the glory, Lord God, that only the true creator can make. So, Lord God, as we enjoy uh, your masterpiece, Lord God, may we also find peace in our hearts. Thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful group of people that we have gathered here today. May you bless us this beautiful day. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us take this time uh, to sing our opening hymn. Our opening hymn comes from our hymnals number 77, How Great Thou Art.
invite you uh, to stand in body or in spirit and join in our call to worship. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out, for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home. A place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my name and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than follow the tents of the wicked. Amen. You may be seated. Let us take this time now to offer our gifts to the Lord.
And... Let us pray for our offering. Dear gracious God, receive these gifts, Lord God. But also, Lord God, receive the music played by the bell choir. Receive our hearts, Lord, as we come to celebrate those who are ringing bells, a harmony for the heavens, Lord God. Receive us, Lord God, as we come with our burdens, with our joys, with our blessings, Lord. Receive everything, Lord God. Receive our hearts and may it be pleasing in your eyes. May you bless us this day. Give us what we seek. Be with me, Lord, as I preach. May there be less of me and more of you. Be with everyone here for those who are here and also joining us online. May the Spirit move within them. May you give to us what we need to hear. So bless us, Lord God, in this time. And for all these things, in Jesus' name, amen. Today's passage comes from Acts chapter 11, verse 26. When he found him, he brought him to Antioch. They were there for a whole year, meeting with the church and teaching large numbers of people. It was in Antioch where the disciples were first labeled Christians. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for our reader, Addison Baker. Uh, again, just encouraging the children here, the church, and also to volunteer your grandchildren or great-grandchildren to continue to read God's Word. It cannot emphasize how important it is for us to be able to learn how to read Scripture at a young age. Today we continue on in our sermon series on how to church and on the book of Acts. Now, we're not going to go through the whole uh, book of Acts, but really what I believe uh, that God, uh, through the Spirit, has told me is what's pertinent to our church right now. And we are in sort of where the church kind of actually starts, the church that we really know starts. Uh, and so for those of you who do not know, and just, uh, uh, just a quick reminder of how the church kind of has evolved. So first of all, we need to understand the church uh, was a part of the Jewish culture and the Jewish religion and the Judaism movement. And within that, we had Christ, who, uh, Jesus, who was a Jew, and we also had a followers of Jesus who were all from the Jewish culture. Community. Now, some were in Jerusalem, and some were Jewish people who lived outside of Jerusalem, the diaspora, or the people who have been dispersed uh, originally from uh, the land of Judea. Uh, but nonetheless, it was a Jewish movement. But the book of Acts really is about the act of God and how God wanted the gospel message to first start wherever he wanted to start, which is the Jewish people, but more importantly, how it spread. And this is the first time, as we heard in the Bible reading, that this was the first time this group of people who followed Christ, who were disciples of Christ, were first called Christians. And I think it is a wonderful thing that it wasn't, they weren't called Christians in Judea. They were not called Christians in Jerusalem, but in a place that was far away called Antioch. So over here we see the church movement, how it used to be a small group of people in Jerusalem now move out to a new place that is called Antioch. And over here we get a good idea of the origins of our name. I think we like to call ourselves Christians, but sadly, I think the media, I think a lot of people uh, in this generation, uh, not only in the States, but all over the world, really, this is something that I have uh, experienced in Korea as well, we label Christians in a certain light, and a lot of times we forget what Christians were all about. So hopefully in this sermon, when we look at the origins of our name, when we call ourselves Christians, 
And when we look at here why we were called Christians, we will have a better idea of what our identity is. And it is really important because the name is our identity. As much as we don't think much of names, what I've soon realized and come to realize is that the labels that are given to us really make up an identity. I don't, I don't know if you, you know, but like the way I look at people are different when people, I just meet people and then I ask, what do you do then? If you don't mind me asking, and they say, I'm a nurse or I'm a doctor. They're just something different. Or when they say, I'm a teacher, they're just something different. And it's just for every single job as well. I think as, you know, when I used, now that I'm doing like home stuff, now, like, the word electrician, there's, or, you know, or plumber, it has a new meaning for me now. There's a newfound respect. I'm like, wow, wow. But, you know, when we look, are the labels that we have, are the names that we have, really show a lot more of our identity than what we think. And it's really important for us, Especially in this day and age where really Christians, are, in, at least in the media or the, the news feeds that I get, aren't really viewed in a positive life for us to reclaim what it means to be a Christian. But how do we reclaim it? We go back to the origins of the name to see what Christianity was all about. Also, it helps us and it helps, it keeps us in check. There is this saying, right, don't forget where you came from. Uh, now, you might be thinking oh, that's just an American saying, but there is a, a, a Korean equivalent saying as well. It's, uh, you know, you were a tadpole once. Uh, that's what they say. Uh, it's, you guys get it? Tadpole, frog, just because you're jumping around on me. Anyway, it's to keep humble. It's, it's to keep humble and to recognize who you really are. And a lot of times because of God's blessings, and sometimes God's blessing, because we are sinful, ends up being a curse to us. But sometimes because God has given blessings upon blessings, God has bestowed blessings upon blessings to us, we can forget where we originally come, why we are called Christians. Sometimes us as Christians, we think that our faith is a right that we ought to have instead of a blessing. Our faith is not a right. It's a blessing. It's grace that we are able to know Jesus. It's not a right that you can demand. It's such a beautiful blessing. But because it is sometimes so easy to be able to proclaim the gospel, it's easy to trick ourselves into thinking, I'm a Christian, so I demand this and this and this and this. That's not the way it works. It's really important that we understand, that we understand our name. Because really the society right now doesn't really, does, at least the media doesn't re, uh, view Christianity in a positive life. And I was, you know, I always just use the Google machine, right? It's always just fun to Google things. And I just, and I just do, I think it was like Christianity problems or something, or just whatever bad word with Christianity. I just Googled it to see what results came out, to see what people are saying about our faith, and more importantly, about our identity. When we say we are Christians, what do people think about it? So in an article um, in the Washington Post, uh, this, uh, uh, the post wanted to highlight that white evangelicals view poverty as a result of individual failings. So again, kind of shifting that white evangelicals or white Christians are bad people. That's, that's not me, what I think, it's just what, what's on the media. And then we also have, uh, there was this another article, if Islam is a religion of violence, so is Christianity. So a lot of people view Christianity as a very violent, uh, violent religion. Uh, and they, you know, they, they give all these, you know, the crusades or missionaries that went out and all these different things. So really the Christianity and Christians aren't viewed in a favorable light. And also, I, I looked at one of the, uh, uh, some survey results about, you know, why people drop out from the church, why younger people, when they go to college, 
drop off from church. And the top five reasons were they moved to college and stopped attending. So they just moved, and they were no longer in the comfort zone. They stopped attending. Uh, church members seemed judgmental or hypocritical. I didn't feel connected to people in my church, disagreed with the church's stance on political social issues, and work responsibilities prevented me from attending. So we have all these reasons why people no longer attend church. And I think a lot of the reasons why uh, these things happen in our church, and our church as a whole, not Milton, but as the whole, is because a lot of times we forget about our identity. We just sometimes need to take a step back and think about the meaning of our name, what it means to be Christians. So I want to start out with this, is that the reason why Christians is a beautiful name is because it was not a self-proclaimed identity, but it was an identity given to people. Okay, and more importantly, it's what's in the name when we say Christian. The name is Christ. The people were called Christians because you could tell when you met Christians that they followed Christ. It was not an identity that proclaimed. They weren't saying, I am Christian, thus I'm going to be doing this. No, they were simply following Christ. They were doing what Christ told them to do. They were living by God's grace, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and that was a label given to them. That's why I really find Methodist to be a pretty cool nickname, too, because Methodist was a label given to Wesley and his group of people because they were so dedicated to following Jesus. It is a label that is given, not something that is proclaimed. I think it's really important for us to understand that. And when we put that into perspective, I think that we end up having a grateful mind. If you start proclaiming that you're a Christian, a lot of times we can fall into that trap of saying, I'm a Christian, so therefore this and this and this has to happen. But when we think of Christian and us being called Christian as a label that other people view us when they look at us and they give to us, then things start looking different. It keeps us more accountable for what we do. And that's one important aspect of why it's important that the people in the church in Antioch were labeled Christians. It was a label that was given to them. So let's see, in this journey to be called Christians, what happened to the disciples of Christ in Antioch? Well, first of all, what we need to understand is that the start of the church was not beautiful. The start of the Christian movement, when people recognized who we were and started calling those who followed Christ Christians, it was not a beautiful movement. If you read verse 19, it says, Now those who have been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Okay? So let's not look at the spreading the word only among Jews part because it changes later. But we see the origins We were persecuted and scattered. And it's not just persecuting as in the Jewish people are hurting my feeling. No, the Jewish people are literally killing people. It's not a beautiful start. Why is this important that we understand this about our name? Why? Well, I want to tell you a story of of just my personal experience of something similar and the lesson that my father gave me. So uh, I don't know if you know or not know, uh, as a Korean citizen, uh, for a Korean citizen, a Korean male, uh, military service is mandatory. And as an 18-year-old, you dread it because you know for two years of your life, you are not going to have a life. 
And you hear all these horror stories of those who made it. They tell you these stories of, man, they make you shovel the ground, and then once you're done shoveling, they just make you fill it back up, and they don't tell you why, or, you know, all these things. And they just tell you these horror stories after the next. And you're like, why? Why, God? Why? Why am I Korean? Like, why do I have to go back to my country and serve? I don't want to do that. And I remember expressing that concern to my dad. My dad said, no, go. Because one thing that you will learn in the military is how little you need to live. And when you understand that, your life, you will be so much freer in your life. Because you won't be afraid of losing anything because when you got nothing and you can still survive and thrive and when you know that about yourself, that is something that you can never earn without going to the military. And that's exactly what I learned. I got nothing. I couldn't take showers. I thought if you sweat and you didn't take a shower, your body would start to rot. No, it just really stinks. But the thing is, if you have 200 people in the barracks that stink, you can't smell a thing. I didn't know it was that bad until I visited the training. And I'm like, the basic training, I go and I couldn't even walk in. I'm like, how did I survive here? But you did. And here's the thing. The reason why it's important when we understand the origins of our name and we understand that it was not beautiful is because a lot of times churches make poor decisions because they're afraid of losing things. They're afraid of losing comfort. They're afraid of these things that they might lose. They're afraid of losing air conditioning or, or this or that or this or that. And they make a lot of decisions based on fear of what they would lose. But if you look at the origins of our name, what we understand is we started with nothing, and that's the point. That's why Christianity is beautiful. Because it didn't start with some rich person handing out money or, hey, I got some nice things, come to us. No, it just started when we had nothing and everything was Jesus, and Jesus gave us everything. And that is something that's really important for us to remember when we say, I am a Christian, or if someone calls you a Christian, and I think that's the greatest honor. If someone comes up to me and says, hey, are you a Christian? I'm like, oh my gosh, God, I'm a sinner, but you have saved me. That's a great honor. And one of the things when we ought to recognize is that the start of the church of Christianity wasn't beautiful. So when we have to follow Jesus don't be afraid. What do you have to lose? It started this that bad, but it ended up here. It's fine. It's going to be okay because God is with us. The second part about our name and our identity is based on telling the good news. The re now, this is in verse 20, it says, Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The reason why they were labeled Christians was because they were telling the good news about Jesus. That's part of our identity. If we are Christians, we need to be speaking of the good news. It's as simple as that. Now, there's different ways to do it. So, you know, a lot, there's some very not good ways of doing that. But just because there's some not good ways, it doesn't mean that we can stop sharing the good news. It's really not that difficult to just say. If people ask, why are you so happy? To be, they just say, because I know Jesus. It's really not that difficult. If you say, why are you helping me? If someone in the volunteer programs or wherever, someone asks you, why are you helping me? And you just simply say, well, it's because I love Jesus. That's sharing the good news. And that's what part of our identity is like. But a lot of times we forget that because we, because there have been certain cases where a lot of Christians kind of forced Christianity down people. And I was hesitant of that too until I had this assignment in my evangelism class. I was to go to random people and share the gospel message. I thought they would hate me. I thought, I thought, so I went to a Starbucks and started talking about the gospel. I thought, you know, the barista would surely hate me. And, uh, but you know what? This person who did not believe was fascinated about hearing the good news. Not what they hear in uh, the Washington Post that say Christians are all bad or all this, but from actually someone who believes in Christ. 
to see the happiness and the joy that the Holy Spirit gives. Our identity, our name is based on telling the good news about the Lord Jesus. And finally, the reason why they were called Christians in verse 26. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Our identity is about learning of who God is, of who Christ is. That is what's in our name. Our name is not about we are Christians, so we will do this, this, or this. Okay, and this, 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 and this, you can, you can put anything in there. Even if it looks like it's something good, that's not what our name is about. We are called Christians because we proclaim the good news. We are called Christians because we want to learn more about Christ. And let us be reminded of that as a church. And as we call ourselves Christians, let us continue to remind ourselves that we are disciples of Christ, that we follow Christ. And that's the reason why we have and we bear the name Christian in our hearts. Amen? Amen. And uh, now let us take this time uh, to share our prayer requests and our concerns as well. I'd like to ask for prayers for my sister. Um, she called me last night. She's on day six of COVID. This is her second time with COVID, and she's had the shots. And it's, it's being pretty hard on her. Just a few uh, concerns that I would like to share as well, uh, just for uh, the teachers uh, and our community. Uh, the school's decision of having a mask being required, uh, I've, I've seen the Facebook groups and some of them are not taking too well to that. Uh, just prayers for everyone. Uh, and especially also our preschool as well because we do follow the school guidelines uh, that everything would go smoothly just to be with people's hearts. Uh, that, you know, it's a community to be a community of love. And also on a global scale, just continue prayers for Afghanistan. Uh, as uh, you surely seen in the media and the news. Uh, and also I know from accounts from missionaries that go uh, to Afghanistan uh, and uh, the persecution that Christians get. Uh, there uh, and received there uh, from uh, first-hand stories uh, that it is really a very difficult time uh, and really to follow Jesus means literally giving your life uh, to a lot of people uh, and uh, just continued prayers uh, for the world would anyone else like to share their concerns or prayer requests Just a couple here. Um, I know my mom mentioned a couple weeks ago about her friend in the hospital. Um, unfortunately, her friend did pass away the other day. So prayers for that family. And then also for the Fenwick family, um, their, um, Noah Fenwick was in a car accident the other day and was med flighted the medicine. So hopefully he has the uh, doctors and nurses and everything caring for him that he can survive all of this. Well, let us pray as we lift our concerns and also as we reflect on today's message. Dear gracious God, we lift up our concerns to you, Lord. We lament, Lord God, that there is so much pain in this world, that there is so much suffering in this world. Listen to our cries. Comfort us, Lord God. May we rely on the gospel, the good news that is Christ Jesus. 
Bless us, Lord God, at this time. I pray for those, Lord God, who are struggling with illness, with COVID. May your healing hand be with those around us. Those struggling because they were hurt. May you be with the healthcare professionals. For us struggling because we have lost people dear to us. Comfort our hearts and our souls, Lord God, in a way that only you can. So bless us, Lord God, in this time. And truly, may our mourning be turned into dancing. For we know that you are good, Lord. Show us your goodness in these times. And I invite everyone here now to end this prayer with the words that our Lord Jesus taught us by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join in our hymn of response. Our hymn of response comes from our United Methodist Hymnals, number 98. benediction as you are sent out. Whoever is ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my Father on his throne. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.